Welcome, Chris Evans right. TV audience. I am fortunate enough to have national level competitor David White with me today. And we are going to talk about the controversial topic of rest days. And, you know, I, I think that both him and I's thought process has evolved on this from probably yep. four, five, six, seven years ago um, to where it is now. So my thought process is let's let's go ahead and dig into it. And when you and I were hanging out in Pittsburgh for North Americans, I said to you, I think I can't even remember where we were at. Maybe we were sitting sitting around, like maybe getting ready to eat a meal or something. And I said, all right, man, what is the one or two things that you would attribute this last spurt of growth to? And you said? Resting more. Correct. <laughs> so from the time we started together, I would say we consistently trained, what, five or six days a week for the most part. Yep. Yep. Um, and not every one of those were like full blast sessions. A lot of some yeah. of those were pump sessions. So I will start yeah. there. But I mean, I think what you and I run into is our pump sessions turn into what most people are like their real session. Yeah. Because we get rolling, the pump gets going and you just feel good. You're like, well, fuck, I'm here. I might as well get after it. Like, yeah, I think you and I both struggle with that. Like if we're in there rolling, like, let's get yeah. out <laughs> I, yeah i have the hunt i have the i have zero idea what like 60 percent looks like like when someone says like take it to 60 percent, i'm like i've got honestly i have no idea where that is like i have a like i could probably stop this set early but like in my mind like if i stop that set early like i'm like cool that was that could have been 30 percent. right right so i think the way i like auto regulate it in my head is i control it with volume and exercise selection yeah. Like, so a pump day is still going to be hard, but I'm going to mostly choose cables, machines, and some dumbbells. And then my yep. volume, I'm going to set that shit at like a hard cap of like 45 to 55 minutes. So yep. you know, we can only get so much work in in that time frame. So that that to me is how I always came to terms with pump sessions, which isn't probably the way John thought about them. But I can tell you this: him and I never did a pump session together. So yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's fair. Yeah. So to me, right, like, and again, I talked about the evolution of our brain and maturity as bodybuilders. Like, I mean, I think we all start out like loving training so much that you view rest days as negative. Like you look down oh, yeah. and like, oh, rest yeah. days are for the week. Um, and <laughs> listen, we've all been there. Uh, but as as you mature as a competitor and you realize like, hey, man, like my body's beat up. Like if I took yeah. a rest day on, say, Wednesday, my session on Thursday will be significantly better than if I went at like 85 percent of max because that's all I had left for Wednesday. Yeah. And then by the time Thursday comes like that may drop down to like what you're viewing as 100 may truly only be like 75 percent of reality. Yeah. Those cumulative like decreases in intensity or your ability to flip the switch to go crazy, diminish. And I, I think that that's what we touched on with your off-season into prep is I put at the top of your program, if you ever need a rest, the extra rest day, take it. And the amount of times yeah. that you would report to me after two days of hard training, hey, Chris, I'm going to take, take tomorrow off. I never said yeah. once, get your ass in the gym and train. Yeah. Never. So why don't you talk to everyone who's watching about how that feeling in your brain goes from transitioning into, well, man, I could probably hit some caffeine and watch some motivational videos or look at my check-in pictures and get pissed off and go train as opposed to now where you're at the point where like, no, I, I need a rest day. Yeah. Well, it comes exactly to that. Like I know like if I'm beat up, I'm not going to be able to give it my best effort. And honestly, I just kind of think about it as, well, if all muscle is is an adaptation to stress, right? And I've taken it to this level before, but now since I'm I'm beat up, the best I can do is here, yep. right? Like, my body doesn't give a shit. Like, it's not going to change because I've done it before, even if that was my best, right? I didn't beat my prior. So if I'm not going to go in and beat my prior best, my body's not going to change. Yep. You know? Yep. And, you know, I think it's perpetuated on, on the internet too and on Instagram. Like, T 
team no rest, no rest days. Like, yep. you know, it's like, oh, what's the rest day muscle? And and I always like, I just shake my head and scream internally because yep. number one, I know you and I agree with this. If you don't feel the need to rest, I'm going to question how hard you're going in the gym. And yep. that doesn't matter if you're natural or enhanced, right? Yeah. It, yeah. If you don't need rest days, you simply put don't train hard enough. Like it's it, it's really easy to go to the gym seven days a week if you just fucking yep. scroll Instagram and use use Tinder, you know. But like, you know, if you're if you're hitting a, a drop set on squats, you know, and you know you take that to the end where you, you know you're legitly dropping the bar off your back when you get to one plate and you just you lay on the floor. You're like, cool. How am I going to do this again in five days? <laughs> You know, <laughs> right. like I'm probably because I I took some time off. I probably need an ice bath or right. sit in a sauna. Yes. And I'm going to have to see someone, you know, to help, you know, probably of some body work and other things to make sure everything's clicking right. <laughs> right. You know? right. And, you know, I also think something that plays into that, right, especially if it's a client of mine or I'm sure you're the same way, like they view – off days and they're like oh man i'm eating less food that day so yeah that means less opportunity to progress so they correlate not training less food with oh my god i'm shrinking or getting worse or at minimum yep. i'm staying the same and yep. that's such a hard thing for me to come to terms with because first of all your protein's not getting lowered it's just normally carbs and maybe some fat or fat is increased and carbs are lowered depending upon the yep. person but you have so much less caloric output in terms of what you're burning, right? Like I've never truly tested how much, how many calories I technically might burn in a training session. Well, also, have you noticed, I don't know about you, but on rest days, because I'm not training, even if I'm not eating carbs, like shit on contest prep days where I am basically eating protein, right? I'm not super flat. No. Why? And why is that? Cause I'm not using it. Like all that glycogen is just in my muscle because I'm not using it, Correct. you know? Yep. So even like off season, my rest days, like by meal three, like I'm just full as a house. <laughs> even if I, you know what I mean? Like yeah. my body has, it has stored glycogen yeah. and I'm not using it. So it's like, cool. It's just there, you know? Yeah. And it allows, and those lower, lower days allow me to be more sensitive to food when I have more food, you know? Yep. Versus, like, if I was pounding food on my rest days, like, first off, I'd be so fucking sick of food. Oh, same. <laughs> same. same. <laughs> I think, that, you know, again, that's another sign that, to me, we've always had your food right, is you look, not only on the rest days are you like, oh, my God, I don't have to go, like, crank yeah, mentally, but it's like, oh, man, I get to back off of food a little bit and not just completely pound my digestive system with carbs, protein, and fat, right? Like, yep. so... It's one of those things where I, I jokingly call all days almost like a fast, right? Because yeah, I I personally will push my off day foods. Like I'll try to not eat as long as possible. Yeah, and and I think it just helps me psychologically. Like because it's like oh, I get a chance to break, give a break to my digestive system. And yeah. I think that's something else that people just don't necessarily think about is they just think oh, less food means less muscle. Less food means yeah. less recovery. Less training means less muscle breakdown, which means less less growth. And it's like that's actually the opposite. I, I personally wonder how much progress I left on the table when I was younger, and especially, um, especially when I worked at the gym because I would always be in the gym for work, and I'm like, yeah. oh, I had a client cancel. Fuck it, let's go do some calves and abs. Oh, yeah. uh, I had a client cancel. My biceps aren't sore let's let's go let's go train biceps for a bit like yeah you do like a milo's giant set and then i'm, and then I'm like yeah. Ooh, smash a meal chill for 10 minutes and then back to work like yeah how much technically did i hold myself back during something like that yeah because in my mind i'm like oh I'm at, I'm at the gym i'm in a playground fuck i might as well do something <laughs> well look, really uh, two things like i'm surprised like i didn't realize this sooner mm -hmm. so when i was 17 Mm -hmm. uh i was getting into bodybuilding you know the arnold encyclopedia yes i remember reading through that i got to the training program so obviously i went to the advanced section of course where i had you know the double split right. so i, I kind of did it my own way because 
well, I didn't do rest days when I was 17. So I did the double split. So I was training. That would have been 14 days a week of training. Um, so 14 training sessions a week. I did that. But then on Sunday, I, I had an extra session just for calves. Oh, right. So I had 15 sessions a week. And at that point, when I was 17, I didn't, I didn't have my own car. So I rode my bike to the gym, right? Oh, so, so the amount of cardio I was doing and then training 15, 15 times a week, I did that for a month straight. Oh, wow. Yeah. Of that. And I took, um, we, we went on a family vacation. So like that whole structure would have changed, right? Right. I was still, still living with my dad at the time. And we went on a vacation, so I had three days in a row where I didn't train. Right. And I kid you not, dude, I don't think anything has ever come. Like it felt like a post show rebound, because <laughs> <laughs> like, like like my diet didn't like I wasn't eating like total bullshit. Like I also wasn't like fully dieting or anything. Right. But like I remember feeling out like crazy, and I was like, "Why is this happening?" Was, like, and it never clicked into me until I was older. But I was like, "Oh." I beat the shit out of myself and I didn't recover. And then when I actually did recover, my like, like I was, I, I had the same pump. Like it was like a post show and I wasn't even training. Like by day three, I was full. I was completely full. Like I had a screaming pump the whole day and I probably put on like three pounds of muscle just from like my body's ability to recover, you know? Yeah. And it's just like, Oh, you know, <laughs> maybe this is important. And Sadly, I think so many people don't ha ever have that realization, right? They, mm -hmm. they never come to terms with it. And I, I know for a fact, I, I was training with a buddy of mine at the time, and man, we, it was an it was an off season, and I was pounding food. But we I was we were going so hard back and forth, like I was only able to train four days a week. Like, yeah, I'd text him and be like, "Can you go today?" Like for that second back session, and he's like, "Man, I feel pretty beat to shit. What do you feel like?" I'm like, "Yeah, like let's just rest, and then we'll do arms mm -hmm. tomorrow." And like, it was really interesting feedback. And I started like paying close attention and I was like, huh, like that was the first time I think ever in my bodybuilding where I was like, mm, maybe these rest days thing, like there's something to them. Yeah. And, you know, as I trained more people and like started to dig my heels in with like learning recoverability again, to me, none of this matters natural or enhanced. Like you can only recover from what you can recover from. Yep. And you can only train as hard as you, to me, you've been taught. And when you marry those two, if your eating's always consistent and perfect, but you're finding that like, hey, like I feel better only training four days or only three days or maybe five is your number. Like more isn't better. Like it's yeah. just simply not. And I have to repeat that like 40,000 times to clients where it's like more is better unless it's not, you know, yeah. like. You can ram a thousand megs a test or two thousand or three thousand, but it doesn't always mean that that's going to give you better progress. Like, yeah. If and if it did, right? If it did, why would you, every single person would just train more or take more drugs? Yeah. Right. Agreed. You Agreed. know, like, and it's just like we, we see these things and it just goes, whoop. Yep. You know, <laughs> nope. you know, and, and listen, I'm sure I'll get, we'll get pushed back in the comments, right? I, I will say exactly what John said to someone in a, in a forum one time. And that is literally come train with you and I for three days in a row and tell me what your body feels like. I, I want to know if you can train for the fourth day. And then like, let's say you could, I want to see what it looks like. Right. Yeah. And if I had to bet, most would be tapping after two, maybe one, but like, I want no part of that craziness. Like, yeah, it, I mean, shit, even the session you and I did the day after your show, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah like literally i looked at you i'm like you're fucking done bro i'm gonna do one more thing but you're done <laughs> you're like yeah you're right and then what's funny about that right is i, I really feel like maybe a, a few years ago you were like fuck it i'm gonna do those stretchers that you did but like you're like no you're right <laughs> yeah. over there I'm like yep yep i probably should stop <laughs> yeah, right like, i could see you were, yeah it was a bad spot right but you know we were we were in that groove you kept mm -hmm. looking freakier as the workout went on yeah and I, honestly in the moment i'd forgot that you were one day post show it just felt yeah. like a normal training session because for me it was like uh, yeah i wasn't suffering <laughs> or i hadn't <laughs> suffered whatever you want to say right um not that your food was low that day but again you yeah. were 
not in the optimal state to go wild. Um, yeah. So yeah, again, you know, can, can, well, let's transition to this. Like, I, I know something that may help a lot of people is on your rest days. I personally always try to fill my training window with something I enjoy. Like, oh yeah, you know, for me, that's twelve to one o'clock. Somewhere in there is a start time for training with me. Like, I'll book a massage. I'll take a nap. Um, I will get like a chiropractor adjustment. I'll do an ice bath. I'll take the dog for a long walk. Like I'll do something that occupies that gap of where I normally step away from work. I'm not eating. Um, yeah. and it may be something, it may be something as simple as like going to Starbucks and having a coffee with Angela, right? Like yeah. that's, I like, that's actually kind of my thing on my rest days. I usually go to Starbucks. I'm like, cool. I'm going to spend an extra five bucks a day, yeah. but it's actually kind of funny. It's like exactly that. Just finding something like, because usually I'm training from 5.30 to 7. Right. So just in that time, like, obviously I don't want to be just at home watching TV because I'd go insane. Right. You know, but it's it's also funny because my rest day is like, obviously I still eat my six meals. Yep. But it's, uh, I like you, I usually push my first meal off until like 8 o'clock instead of 7. Right. Yep. And then my whole day does not revolve around training. So I'm really productive. Oh, a thousand percent. Yes. <laughs> like, because uh, if you're like, I know you're like me, because like when I eat meal one, I'm like, okay, cool. I've got three more meals until I'm training. Right. And then I eat meal two and I'm like two more meals. Right. And then like, so like when I want to do things, like be like, okay, cool. I need to run these errands. I'm like, all right, cool. Like I, I've got like four hours until I'm at the gym. <laughs> you know what I mean? Versus like on my rest days, I don't really give a shit what time it is. As I have my food and it's coming with me. Right. But like, I'm not so concerned about timing or anything else. It's just like, all right, cool. We're eating and we're moving on. Right. As long as it, as long as that next meal falls in the two to even honestly three and a half yeah. hour window, I'm yeah. I'm straight. Yeah, exactly. Um, as but as opposed to what you said, like at minimum, my meals before training are going to be here. My meal post training yeah. obviously is going to be thirty to sixty minutes post lift for sure. Mm -hmm. And then depending on how long I nap afterwards is going to dictate. <laughs> and honestly, exactly. How, how, how much, and honestly, how much food I have left. Like if it's an all season and I'm smashing food, like it may be pushed to three hours. I'm in a contest prep. It might be two hours I'm fighting to get to like, and yeah, and it's going to better. Like, but I think that's, you know, what you just said there was huge, right. And it's something else that a lot of like folks just don't consider is like that meal timing. And then that ease of mental, like less stress, of an off day being like, oh, well, I'm not necessarily married to the clock of my yeah. meals falling perfect. Because listen, neither you or I want to go into the gym with a full bloated stomach and, tr and try to like lay down on a lying leg curl. And you're just like, oh, fuck, or you put your belt on for something. And it's like, man, this doesn't feel good. Right. So, right. you know, that's why we're so focused on spacing those meals the right yeah. way. Or an off day, you don't have that. Right. And I yeah. think something else tying in with the mental release of not having that stress the actual training itself is stress induced even though you may enjoy it right yep. you and I talked about that yesterday you were like man you would probably already have anxiety for those sets of legs today and I was like, yep. yeah. like I was already I, I, I was texting you I was already thinking about it I was like okay I got seven plates and I add after a leg press and I have to beat 15 yep I have to like there's not a choice like it, it has to go up 15 or more times yeah. And when you remove that, like I had have, have on a on a Tuesday night, for example, I, I don't yeah. have it at all. It's gone. I'm literally just thinking about, oh, okay, cool. I gotta get up on Wednesday, I'll do my cardio and then do client work. That's not stressful. Yep. <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's like cool, this not a like the, the ease. <laughs> and then, then you go to and bed and you're like, you're like shit, well, I've got back tomorrow. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, and like, the, listen, I don't think for everyone, I don't think everyone probably feels as much pressure as you and I do, or maybe you don't put as much pressure on themselves to think about training that next day and how important it is, like, but I view that, like, I don't even, I don't know if it's just a game, right? Like, yeah. I need to inflict torture, I need num to hit numbers that I want in my head, and I need to get a pump so aggressive that it hurts. Yep. And, like... <laughs> Even though I listen, you know, you and I live for that shit, like it still causes some anxiety going into it. Like, 
Yep. No matter what it is. I mean, w- when you want to rack six or seven plates on a hack squat, like that may be the last time I ever hack squat again if I fuck something up, right? Like, yep. Uh, and I think like w- when you factor that in, all things considered, of not only is the workout itself stressful, leading up to it is anxiety ridden. And then afterwards, you have that like come down back to reality. When you completely remove that, you allow your body to like really fill out and grow. Yep. Which is why rest days are so motherfucking important. So like, I mean, I know you feel that. Mm -hmm. And that's why, like when you said that to me, I had no idea what you were going to say. Because listen, each off season, we do some things a little bit different. Yep. Food may be higher or lower, like training may be more focused on a certain area but like this last all season you had previous to north americans i feel like is easily the most productive we've ever had and to yeah. hear you say like it was simply just more rest days man like yeah th- that was a just re- reaffirming to me that i have to push this down people's throats yeah because that's what everyone wants to know when, whenever i post your photos or i say hey his skill weight and went here to here. His show pictures are just as lean, if not leaner. And like, how in the fuck did he do that? Mm-hmm. They think I'm selling you fucking Inkelex or some crazy shit. <laughs> right. I, yeah. No. I'm spending I'm spending four hundred dollars a day on Inkerlex. It's cool. You know. <laughs> like what what do you give it? You're, you're you have to be having him on something crazy protocol wise. And I'm like, it's the same. Is it no? It's just it's just not. It's more food. It's harder training, and it might be slightly increased supplements. Like maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah. And you know, well, I think that's the funny part about like, increasing supplements, right? Think back to like the first show we did together. Like in all reality, like I think we've gone up probably like fifty milligrams total, <laughs> like, dosage wise. You know what I mean? Like, it's not always like when you, you increase supplements, it's like, you know, a little bit does a lot. What, and that's because you had a foundation of everything else, right? Yeah. And I think so many avoid that. They're like, they, they and the reason I don't even honestly post that shit is because I don't think anybody would believe me. They'd be yeah. always full of shit. And I, I could show them your literal spreadsheets and they probably still wouldn't believe it. Like, oh, he went back and modified that. First of all, I don't have that fucking time to go back and modify that shit. Like <laughs> if I was going to share it. And then two, again, I don't be, feel like being called a liar. Cause listen, you, you and I are the only person that knows what goes in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, you know, when you think about that, like th- I've always believed in my heart that it's the synergy of all th- of, well, technically four. Oh yeah. Rest, recovery, training, nutrition, supplements. Though, in in by supplements, not only do I mean gear, but I'm also talking health supplements. I'm also talking performance aid supplements, like the yep. things we take to enhance your pump, um, the things that might help you sleep, or the yep. things that keep your kidneys and liver clean, so that you can process all the food properly. And the supplements that we yep. do take can run its course. Like it's it's so hard for people to wrap their mind around the fact that those four working together perfectly in unison creates the most optimal growing experience. Mm-hmm. And I know like I, I literally hate the word you using it optimal, right? But that's the fucking truth. Yeah. When all four of those are good. And at this point, I don't even ever question us a bit of how hard you're training or your form or your technique. So that's checked off. You eat all your meals done. Another thing checked off. Like, you're going to get your rest and recovery and do your therapy check. And I mean, listen, we're, we're not going to miss supplements. So it's like one of those things where it's like, all right, cool. Like now we just find ways to make it a little bit better. You can eat more food because you're bigger. You can train a little bit harder because you're learning new levels of intensity. Your form and execution is better. Your mind muscle connection to each muscle is better because you have more tissue. Like that, that is the true secret. And then now that you're yep. learning, like, Hey, like, I'm starting to be able to identify when my body needs a rest break and then you take it and you aren't stubborn. Like that's the magic, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. It's definitely the facts there. Yeah. And it, it, it's really frustrating, right? Because I really believe in my heart. People just literally crave results. They, they want the end result. 
and sometimes like they actually work against themselves right and you know john told me that many many years ago well about you know digging your digging the ditch you have to dig it so deep that it causes adaptation but not so deep that you can't climb out of it and that yeah. analogy always clicked for me because i mean I, I think you and i could get in the gym and run each other so far in the damn ground that we'd probably have to take every other day as an off day yeah how, how how truly productive would that be and the answer is probably not because uh, eventually yeah. our joints or body would fight back and say hey yeah like, pump the brakes a little bit like because at, it, there's, there has to be a crazy ceiling. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think either of us have truly found it yet, but we're searching. And so it, to me, like when, again, when, when you are starting to learn like, hey, my body needs rest, and then you actually are mentally mature enough to take it, like mm -hmm. that to me is what I view as hardcore. Yeah. Right. Because, you know, oh, exactly. we've all heard like, oh, you took a rest day, pansy, like. I, and and right. what I'm really thinking is, oh, you didn't take a rest day. You're the one who's training suboptimal and not even sniffing failure, right? Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Let me show you one set, and then see how many times you can repeat that. Let's say you got you can repeat that five times in a session. Okay, now do that three days in a row and get back to me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Like back to the original things, like. I mean, there's definitely variances. Like, if you're training as hard as you can, right? If you can do a, the set, same set twice, you didn't do the first set hard enough. You know, right? Agreed. And especially if you're moving at a good pace, right? Because oh yeah, we've all seen. I'm, I'm not going to stereotype powerlifters, but it's like you do a set and then wait. You might as well wait 20 minutes, and you you don't even have a sweat yeah. anymore. Like yeah. Oh that, man, that's like the. That gets me so hard nowadays because everybody's like the optimal rest time, you know, they're like you got to wait four minutes between sets. And it's like, well, obviously wait till you can go again. But like the fact that half of y'all aren't even sweating in here and it's 80 degrees in this building. Right. You know? Yeah. And I, I think that's like really hard for people to, to like do by themselves where if you think about it, when we train, it's like I go, you go change weight. And then we may take a little bit longer rest period before the top set, right? Yep. And that's just to like mentally lock in, make sure my breathing and mind is in the right spot so that I can literally give max effort. Yep. And then you'll do the same. We immediately pull plates and do a back off. And then it's right to the next exercise. Like it's pretty, it's moving. And like I think like, when when you when you couple that with literally going to the end on your work sets, I mean, it, it, it beats your body up and it gets you mentally right. I mean, like you, yeah, you can feel your CNS working like yep. to where like we would come home, eat, and be like, okay, I'm going to go chill and lay down. <laughs> yeah, if you aren't afforded that ability. Like, cause let's say you have to go back to work or maybe you have to go home and play with your kids or fill in the blank. Like to me, it's almost like one of the things, like, are you truly tapping into where you need to be to grow at a maximum rate? Yeah. And I will always say no. Like, yeah, if you can, if you can go in the gym and legit train your legs to the max intensity and then come home and do anything family related besides watching Netflix, I will always question what you did. Like, yeah at least you get at least post workout you're just sitting in your car for five minutes just yeah thinking yeah you know i mean think about the last time we hit, you and i hit the newbie together like we just sat in the floor sweat pooling off of us and we're like fuck i, I didn't even want to drive home yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, I was fine being on that ground yeah right like the first time we did legs together i if you didn't have to go to the airport, I think we'd have probably sit outside on that big ass tire for at least 25 minutes and just like, oh, easily let, let everything come back down. Easily. Um, Dude, that was the funniest airplane ride. Like, I was literally like on that plane, like shaking. Like, my CNS was still like, what the fuck happened? <laughs> right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Listen, you and I have never had a poor workout together. Mm -hmm. and that's one, because we don't allow it to be poor. Um, exactly. You know, it's just not an option. 
it's you're in town we're gonna fucking go and yeah it's just like to me like there's just no other option right like even when we were in pittsburgh and you spotted me for those two two work sets one for back one for legs like you couldn't get in on that session sadly but yeah. like it, it was take those sets were done to the max of my, of my ability in that moment yeah and like I remember saying to you, like I wish that was on camera because the more yep. I feel like you and I posted those those sets, the ones that matter, the feedback I'm seeing from people now is like, man, I'm I don't sniff that. I need to get better. And like to me, like that's what you and I's job is, is to give examples of like, hey, like there's more left. Like, oh, I, I didn't go that hard. Like, okay, cool. Like you'll post a video of your leg press. I'll watch it and be like, okay, cool. Like that, that's I need to at minimum match that shit the next time I go in and train legs. Like that's mm -hmm. the mindset. Like I feel like you and I are kind of tasked with. And I've always viewed it that yeah. way, right? Like you have to lead by example. And then if people start mimicking that, I bet you those rest days are going to become <laughs> much more frequent. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. All right, man. I think that's perfect. I think we've beat that nail that nail multiple times from all different angles. Anything you want to yep. say to wrap up? No, that's that covers basically all of it. Other than make sure you take your rest days. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. Okay. Listen, I'm gonna tell you right now because everyone wants a takeaway. They want to be told what to do. Four to five days a week. Yep. That's it. No more. Just at minimum, make yourself this next all season or pre contest. Whoever you're listening. Make yourself take two full rest days and then let's look at your progress. And then on that fifth day of training, like really sit down and hard assess like what it was like pre pre lift, post lift, and then where your growth was like. And then like after that session, like, cause listen, you and I'm sure have had this moment where you've like, man, I, should I have came and done that? Like, was that truly beneficial? You can trick your mind into thinking yes, cause I've done it. <laughs> I've rationalized that was worth it. In hindsight, with clarity, it's like, no, 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 that wasn't worth it. Like, I need yeah. to say that I should have been more intelligent. So that, that that's the take in four to five days a week at most. Stimulate that muscle, run into the ground, go home, eat your meals, sleep, rest, recover. That's the yeah. answer. That's the take home from today's message. So for little Dave, Chris Evans TV. Until next time. Rest. See you guys. <laughs>